have the money, but Trump has the people. And yeah. not just people, people who love him, who admire him, who look up to him, who have hope. And he, that's not worshiping somebody. I have to add this because a lot of people say, don't you think it's wrong to worship Trump? I'm like, They're not worshiping him. They're honoring him. There's a big difference. But somebody you honor that has helped change your life and cares about this country. And he does. Yeah. And that's why most people choose him. People who don't even necessarily maybe not care about him, but they don't want to lose their families, the parents' permission. They have hurt themselves, and I'm just going to go right into what God had told me. Yeah, go for he it. Said, and, and one second, yeah. Kat, just before you do, because I'm sorry to do, let's go ahead and not put any of those memes up now. Let's give it all, all the cat on that. So we'll just her face and my face, and that's it. Sounds <laughs> good. Thanks, Paul. Go for it. Sorry, sorry, Kat. Yeah, he's God has had me um, study and look at, seriously, because I wasn't looking at any of their stuff because I knew God had chosen Trump. I knew that they don't just represent the left and the liberals and the Democrats. They represent Satan. I'm talking about the, well, call them what you want to. Yeah. The whole agenda is don't help. They're not helping anybody and they're never going to change. That is their agenda. They want to take our land, take our jobs, take our money. And then they want to control, uh, control us as a communist state, a communist uh, country. And it's not. This is America the beautiful, America the free. That's never changed, no matter how much they wanted to change it. And what they're doing is illegal. Literally illegal. I'm just going to be blunt. You want me to be blunt? Yeah, God, as God blunt has, as you want on this day, be as blunt God as you want. God adamantly told me some of them will not live through this. He's talking about the left, the, the illegal, not the illegal aliens. Uh, I'm talking about the ones who are trying to run this. And I'm not just talking about the ones in America sitting in an office that they don't belong in. I'm talking about the ones in other countries who are driving this, encouraging this, wickedness and evil. Uh, they want this world. But this is what they say. This is what the left says. When we get America, we get the world. Yeah, it would be true, wouldn't it? If, if they did get America, they Absolutely. would Absolutely. Yeah, because as goes America, everyone else has to fall in line because we're sort of the big fish, if you will, for, for lack of any other terminology. We're really yeah. standing in the way of a lot of takeovers. And even in the past, we were like that. And yeah. we did help other countries. I mean, we're not. That's why God put us here. Right. He made America. He made America great. He made America beautiful. He made America loving. And America itself still is. Don't hate this country. The country didn't do anything. We, the yeah. people, weren't a part of all that evil. It was the evil people thinking they were going to take over. And they knew that they knew that usually for what's in the land that they can use or take advantage of. They're wanting to build their own communist communities. I'm not making any of this up. Okay. Wow. I don't do that. Yeah. And I'm not afraid for my own life because God would take them down if he had to. And he would yeah. He will not allow things to happen to me because because he knows I'll say what he wants me to say. And I honestly have met the Father, have met Jesus Christ, and, and Holy Spirit's my best friend. All of that's true. But they've not stopped talking. The whole time I was in Maryland, which those meetings were so powerful, the presence of God was powerful, and they were trained uh, by, by myself through God in a lot of things that they'll need in the days ahead. I can just say this, God won't let me stop saying celebrate. Because he knows he's been from the beginning to the end. People, you have to remember this. He's not just a being and he is not just a person. He literally created air and he created us to breathe that air in heaven. When we were there as little spirits of light, we didn't have to breathe. We didn't, we didn't need that to breathe. On earth we do as human beings. So God has plans for himself during this time. Satan knows that. And he's been busy convincing all these people to be a part of his plan to do what he wants to do, you know, make robotic people, not even real human people. That's what their plan is. Uh, they want to serve us stuff that will hurt us. They've defiled our crop crops. They defiled a lot of the stuff you get in the grocery store. Pray over everything if you can't do anything else. Have God eliminate anything in those in the foods or the products that you don't want or that are not good that you want to invade your body. The mass thing was to separate us because they know when we get together, it's dangerous. Whatever we do um, on behalf of God that would eliminate the lies and expose the lies and the evil plans, they, they want to get rid of people. And I actually did hear that the interview that she had, had done with um, NBC News when she told him, literally, we'll just get rid of people. We'll just get rid of them. Did she say that really? Yes, she did. And Kat, do you remember four four years ago when we started talking about this, neither you or I 
had this knowledge yet, nor the guts mm -hmm. to say it if we did. But now we know what they're trying to do. But go, what, what did she say? When he began to interview her, well, you know, this is the thing. When you become evil, you I'm not joking, you, your, your mind is seared. There's a part of your mind you can't access anymore at all. And that's the goodness, the goodness, uh, what's right to do for people, helping people, not stealing from them. And they do that too. I'm just going to be blunt about yeah, that. Too. Just be blunt. I'm being very blunt because yeah. God's blunt. I know yeah. what he's saying. I know what he's going to do. I know what's going to happen to them, to all of them, the ones who are on the, the side of the evil and the wicked. And that is exactly what they have been doing. And they have been planning this for a long time. This isn't just a plan they made right now. That's why they're that's why they're better at what they want and they've already got plans, know what they're gonna do. And and part of it's already starting to fall apart. I just say the good side of all this is it is falling apart. And there's entities out there saying they've already lost. I'm talking about the Democrats. Yeah, you they've mean they're lost. they're 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 admitting in internally that we've already lost this thing. They they have the Satan is saying oh Satan the Democrats says. an entity is a demonic being okay okay they're in part of Satan's kingdom right and they're already saying you know they just need to get out they need to get out and get stop being involved with things that are going on they're about to lose a lot of their support not just money wise but but actual literal support on plans and things that they had said they would be a part of and help out with doing this destruction stuff a lot of them are saying we're out because That's they don't good. want to be caught they don't want to, they don't want to be caught because if intercessors find out that these other beings are a part of this stuff they'll shred them we have the ability to do that as a believer satan is under our foot he is not over us unless you give him the ability to be over you. If you play in the darkness, if you run after the darkness, you're opening things in your own soul that will welcome hell into your life. You don't want to do this. The greatest days for God are coming on the earth. And Satan wants to take it now before that happens. He is terrified of every believer. He doesn't attack you because he's angry. He attacks you because he's terrified. And that's, that's why good. he's doing that. Yeah, everyone should get up and shout right now from Yeah, I remember that. you told me that uh, a few years ago. I'm glad ago this when, is live. <laughs> yeah, when, yeah, when a few years ago when we were Israel in Israel on the Sea of Galilee, you came up to me and said the enemy's terrified of you and I thought, what does that mean? He's not why would and you were and you were so convincing because I watched your eyes and heard your spirit basically. Yes. You're saying that to believers in general. That yes, I am. Them. Yeah, he is. But we're actually we're going to actually make T-shirts that say "Dangerous Against Hell." Good. We're going to make things you can put in your home, on on outside your home, on your cars that say "I'm Dangerous Against Hell," and then have a cross on there, because they people need to know that's who you are. If you're born again, spirit filled, cleansed by the blood of Christ, you carry part of his anointing. First John 2, 27, when you receive Jesus Christ as your savior, you receive a deposit of the anointing. Now I want you to hear very clearly what I am saying. Okay. That deposit is given to you by Jesus Christ. He didn't, it didn't start as just yours. But when you give yourself to Christ, he gives you part of him. It's the anointing he walks in. What does the anointing do? It blinds the enemy, pierces the enemy, brings the terror of God upon them. And it's in you because the rest of the scripture is you receive this deposit of the anointing and it lives in you. From the time you were born again, you had it. It's the first weapon that Christ gives you when you receive him. He doesn't just write your name on a scroll somewhere in heaven. You get things given here, given to you to use in your life on this earth. You get to command the host of heaven to God protect and keep you, to put on strongholds, shred platforms of the enemy everywhere. That's another thing that he gives you. He gives you his word. He, we know we have, we have the power of his blood in our lives because of what he did for us and us receiving that. But you become dangerous against hell the moment you are born again, you're dangerous. And from that moment, Satan tries to drag you off the path God has you on. He tries to get you discouraged or take the hope away, take your joy away. The joy of the Lord is our strength. 
These are powerful things that were given to us, but you don't have revelation on that. You don't understand how powerful you are because of Jesus Christ. He fights for us himself. I know people have this loving, kind side of him, but he's a warrior. One of the fiercest warriors. Yeah, he's got a se very severe. Yeah, a, yeah, a severe mercy, or or he's he's without mercy toward the wicked. I was praying this morning about that yes. and saying, Lord David, ask God to destroy the wicked. Talking about the truly wicked the, who have decided yeah. for their eternity to to hate God and fight Him. That's the wicked. Even if you just look through the Old Testament, see how many times God intervened on behalf of Israel. Even uh, even now in this in our life that we're in, God has intervened on behalf of Israel. But as the believers, we are we are uh, you know we are we are not blended in. We've been become a part of them because of who we believe in. We love the same God. We do love the same God. Yeah. And God is fierce about protecting Israel. Yeah. He's not just upset about things. He gets fierce. And you can remember when just one angel was sent really wicked evil coming against Israel. Uh, many things happen where God intervened. He is going to start intervening, by the way, because he's the one who told me in 2020, the day after the elections, when he said, there's so many, they haven't even shown who they are yet. I don't know who their names are, so don't come looking for me to tell you. <laughs> I would just tell you this. There are many in high places in the Democratic Party in the legal, you know, the, the legalistic people who are out there, the evil and the wicked who are wanting to be a part of things. I do know that there are people in Hollywood who've left their whole plan to be a part of the evil stuff and uh, and people who don't know how to run a country. You know why? Because they're not running the country. They don't know how to help the country because they don't want to help the country. They that your, is they, their plan. And you're saying they literally want to take this country down. They're, they're, they're posing as if they want to help the country and they have no intentions of helping this country. They, want they to never elected. have. Yeah, it's weird. They never have. And let me tell you why. Because the power, the anointing and the power goes with the president. Yeah. When it says when the righteous are in office, you know, the people rejoice, correct? Right. When the evil are in, in, uh, in office, they don't. Right. These evil people are not in office. They stole it. They stole the White House. They stole these seats. They stole it because they wanted to corrupt it. They wanted to take over from the very beginning. That was their plan. They're not going to change. And I'm not kidding either. That's they the haven't truth. really met we, the people of this country, but some of them are starting to speak up and show up. You're not giving this country to you, wicked, evil people. You're not going to get it. You will never get it. You will lose miserably. You will lose your money. You'll lose your businesses. You'll lose your platforms. You'll lose your power. It's going to be taken away from you. God will not allow you to operate in this earth the way you're operating. If you want to live, I'm not threatening you. He is. That's Many okay. warnings were given from God himself to the prophets. He, they warned leaders of countries. They warned, warned leaders of different places and people groups that they had better stop doing what they're doing or they're not going to exist. He's very blunt. These days coming on the earth belong to the Most High God. He's oh, They've always been on his timeline. I saw his timeline. You will not take that from him. You have no power in you. If you think you're fighting us, you are fighting God himself and you won't win you choose life well you wicked evil people democrats i hope you're still leaving that party you shouldn't want to be a part of what they're planning you won't have a place to live either they want your land your money your buildings they want your family they want your children they want what satan wants don't stand with them you don't want to go down in history as being one of the worst people on the earth what kind of a what kind of a thing is that to leave for your family, for your children, for your grandchildren? Yeah. You won't have a legacy because you won't be here. Satan does not care about you. He is using you. And when he's done, and Hitler is still on a meat hook in hell. I mean, you that literally saw that. Taking over Germany. He also had that same spirit in him. 
He wanted the world. Did he get it? No. He didn't get it, and you won't get it either. God is in charge of this world. We, the believers, we have authority to speak into the realm. We're kings and priests unto our God. That is a spiritual level of authority and dominion. And you won't get past them, let alone the people in the mountains. It's going to fall back on you. I would not want to be a part of the garbage and the trash and the evil and the hate and the wickedness. You belong to Satan. He's probably getting your meat hook ready in hell wow. with your name on it. Wow. These are the days of glory and power for God to manifest that there is a living God. This is his plan. I know it's not yours, Satan, and you're not going to get your way. And neither will anybody who follows you. Because you don't care about anybody, devil. You were a loser from the day they kicked you out of heaven on a lightning bolt that seared your brain. And even this moment, your heart grieves and demands to take over. And you only get a few years, and that's a long ways away. But these days of glory and power will let the world know there is a most high God, Elohim, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We worship you in spirit and in truth. You have strategies already. You're working those strategies. The hosts of heaven are flooding this earth right now. And there's nothing you can do to fight against them. You better run, devil. You better give up, demons. These days are being taken away from you. You'll be sat in the same hole and bottomless pit as Satan. But these days, we will laugh. We will celebrate and eat cake because of the victory our God has given us. I do not worship Trump. I honor him for who God called him to be. He's on Trump's side. And you better get your greasy hands off of him or you won't live. God will protect him and keep him. He will be president. No matter what you say or think, even the right. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat or, you know, I don't care what you are. You can't stop God's plan. As long as Trump wants it and he's saying, yes, he will sit in that White House. And wouldn't you like it, devil? If he ended up with eight years, eight years, because you owe him. The in this moment in time, Donald J. Trump is number 46. And the reason why he can't fail, he's anointed, appointed because he's righteous. He really has the power to help this country, and he's going to. And everyone will rejoice. I've already been taken into the future, and I saw it. Oh, what what did you see? I saw people in America first running out, grabbing whoever they could grab. It was just like when they won, when they ended the war. You yeah. see all these pictures where people are grabbing each other, hugging everybody. It's going to happen. I, I saw it happen. People were grabbing everybody, rejoicing and thankful that our country had been saved. Yeah, they yeah. were shouting to God. But they were also shouting to Trump. Praise God. So Thank this you for is Trump. The, this, yeah. you want to know what the future is? It's God's. It's God in us. The hope of glory. That means we'll carry the glory, release the glory. The glory blinds the enemy. Whole cities will be consumed by the glory of God. They'll be called regions of light. Crime won't be able to remain there. Evil won't be able to be there. That's what's coming to this world. And you know it, devil. And you're not going to stop it. No human being following Satan has a pea brain. That's what they got. They, they, that's what they got. They got peas in their brain. Because you can't think right. You can't plan right. You just want evil. However, you can make money, which, by the way, you will lose. How do I know? The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just and the righteous. And you don't have more than God. And no matter how much you fight and strike against us, you will still lose because God is on our side. Why should we be afraid? So good. So good. So good. These are holy days that we're entering into, and they won't be able to stand the holiness. They hate holy. The enemy, our enemy, 
our enemy. Even the Democrats' enemy is the same person. It's Satan. They just let them, you know, they're used by him. You're used by people in China. You're used by people in Russia. You're used by people in other places around this world. You're being used by those who want what the enemy wants. They want to take over. Guess what? It's not going to happen. The only one who ever really ruled this whole world, his name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. For a thousand years, he'll sit on the throne in Jerusalem and be king of this world. And no one can stop that from happening. My hope is in him. My life is in him. My future is in him. If you're a believer, your future is great. I've been to heaven. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's powerful. You have such celebration, such creativity there. It is not boring. It's the most beautiful place that God has ever made. And it is for all of us who follow, love, and believe in Jesus Christ. Get ready to have some of the greatest days of your life. Get ready to have new businesses, new inventions, new creations, because God is going to take this whole mess. And everyone in it, from the biggest stone to the smallest, will fall in the greatest landslide. And I will not stop saying that. Because we follow what God wants. We want to know him. We want his strategies, his plans, his blessings, his love, his promises, his all his everything he's got that he has done for us. We should be grateful for who you believe in and the price that he paid for us. Yeah. He wiped up hell on the third day. Jesus Christ blasted them. It was the biggest, <laughs> it was the biggest unexpected thing. They thought they had the Son of God. Now they were going to torture him. So he got all the principalities and powers to come down to hell to watch their leader, their loser leader, Satan, torture him. And on the third day, Christ said nothing the whole time he was there. They were so afraid to touch him, they put him in the back part of hell so that nothing could happen to him until they knew for sure the Father wasn't going to come and get him. And they figured by the third day, he's not coming. Because remember, I told you their brains are seared. Evil yeah. this will sear your brain. You can't yeah. even think normal at all. You can only really? see evil. And so here they come. They're going to put on their big show. Satan comes in with his royal robes and all those stones of uh, stones of fire that were put on him in his making in Ezekiel 28. Look it up. And he was ready to just do it. And Christ stands up. And all the hierarchy of, have, of hell is on their seats in this place. The principalities and powers are waiting to see the Son of God tormented. He stands up and releases the fire of God from his hands. He literally melted as he passed his hands over them. I was taken back in time and I saw it happen. He wow. melted their faces like cheese. And guess what? They're still melted. Satan couldn't even fix them. They were screaming and yelling and they were running out down these tunnels down in hell to get away from the son of God, left their leader in the dust and coals of hell. And Jesus walks over. He beat the stew out of him. I don't mean really? he slapped his face. Oh no, he beat him. He beat him. He ripped all his royal robes off. He removed every stone of fire off of him. He took them back to the father. Wow. He also took leans down after all this insult to him. All his power in his own place. Jesus wasted him. And then when he exit hell, he exited hell and just took himself out of there. Come back up into the grave. Gets his body back. Steps back into his body. The two angels had been there all along guarding that tomb and keeping it for him. They rolled the stone away so he could come out. The Lord of glory. He left in great victory. He knows he wasted Satan. He knows right in the front of his highest hierarchy. They all know they lost. They all know they're losers, but because their brain is seared, they can't have another plan. So stuck in their head is they won. There's no way they won anything. Ooh. Don't give yourself to him. Your life will be wasted and you'll end up in the lake of fire for eternity with no way to get out. Receive Christ this day, and he'll wipe away all your sins. You still have a chance to run your race and be great in this earth for him. 
I'm looking forward to these days coming on the earth. I fully intend to be a part of those days on the earth. But where will you be? In prison? In hell? Trying to run and hide for the rest of your life? Mm. Because you will be found guilty in the courts. It may be a military trial. I don't know what kind of trial it will be on this earth. But you've already been found wanting in the courtrooms of heaven. Kat, there's some people that feel like they've gotten away with all the things that they've done. Talk about that if you... What was God showing you about those? They think they've gotten away with it. I can just tell you, I think they're making a lot of millstones in heaven right now. And if you don't know what that is, you better look in the scriptures. Because God talks about what he will do to those who touch his little babies. The spirits of life that he sent from heaven. And then knit them together in the mother's womb. Their guardian angels came at that time to be with them. Until they go home to heaven one day. God is not tolerating that kind of evil and wickedness. You will pay a dear price if you don't repent of that right now. Yeah. He does have your name down. He knows He knows where you live, what your name is. He knows your whole history. He knows every evil act you've done. He knows who did it, who paid for it, how they did it, when they did it. He knows all of that. No one will escape being judged and punished. Yes, he knows. And he's been from the beginning to the end and the end to the beginning. You will not escape. All the evil you have done being paid for it, it won't be worth any of the money you got. They will rescue them. You may not live because they won't tolerate it. I'm being honest. I tell the truth. And I can let you know right now, God is not tolerating you doing that. You take their life. You drink their blood. How long do you think you're going to live? And when you get to hell, you'll be tormented worse than everybody else. That's the way Satan pays you bad. It isn't worth it. You cannot get away. Look what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah. Look what he did. Would you like to be salt? Would you like to be a pillar of salt? Would you like to be drowned in the sea? Because God said, he said it would be better if you had a millstone, which are about 10 feet high and six feet thick. It'd be better than if you had had a millstone tied around your neck and cast into the bottom of the sea than face what he's going to do to you. Those who actually take their life, those who come and medically or even not medically, they just so you know, this is part of their plan. They want to make it possible for anyone, not even doctors, to perform abortions. Do you know the damage that can be done? They talk about eliminating harm to the woman or to the mother. They're lying, lying out of their teeth. That is very harmful to have an abortion performed on you. Not to talk about the mental stuff that goes on in your mind later. The saint will make sure he torments you, even though he encouraged you to have that done. Don't let anybody do it. Do not allow that to happen to you or your child. I'm sure there's people who would love to adopt children. There's probably thousands of them looking for children. But when you do not want to become a part of that, let me tell you what happens. Their little spirit is taken back to God in heaven. They get to live in the nurseries up there. They're cared for. They're loved. But they know who did it. They already know you're their mom. They know who you are, the, the, the womb that they were taken from. They even know the people that did it. They're not ignorant to that. Mm. God, Jesus heals their little heart for not being wanted. If you give yourself to Jesus Christ and repent of having that done, when you go home to heaven, you will get that very baby given back to you. And you will get to raise that baby or babies in heaven. Amazing. God is merciful. Yeah. He is merciful. If you repent, you'll be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. But if not, then you will not ever see your baby. So can a, a woman who she's in her teens or 20s and she had an abortion and now there's all this wound to her soul and everything. She feels like God could never forgive her. Not only can God forgive her, you're saying, but she can be with that baby one day and raise it in heaven. Is that am I saying absolutely that yes? Absolutely okay. yes. I have seen. I have been in heaven when that happened when they were given back. Really, I've seen young little children waiting on the steps of the person's mansion who's about to come home to heaven. I've had women come and repent to me that they had it done. One woman came to a book signing. My book signings were ministry times. And they would they would want me to pray for them. Mm -hmm. And they repented. <laughs> they didn't have to repent to me, but they're repenting to God forever. 
And let me tell you what happened. It was getting dark. The sky opened over this place where I was having my books, honey. We took pictures outside. The sky opened, blinding light, rays of light came down from the sky. A portal opened in heaven and I saw the five babies up in heaven rejoicing because their mother had just gotten saved and they knew that they would see their see see that see her one day and right there in front of that table she picked the names for every one of those children <laughs> the father welcomed them to the throne room and told them this is now your name your mother just named you amazing amazing grace man amazing grace I've been in a store before just to walk into a store like a 7-Eleven or something. And the Lord said, notice the person over there sweeping the floors. It was a young guy, a young guy. And I walked over there just having a little chat chat, you know, asking him how he's doing and everything. And because of the presence of God there, he just began to weep. He goes, I don't know why I'm crying. I said, well, do you want to say something or do you want to say something to God? You can just tell him yourself. And he said, well, I was dating somebody and, and she got pregnant. And her parents forced her to have an abortion. And he begged the parents, don't do that to her. That's my baby. Don't do that to her. But she, they had authority. She was like, I think, like 17 years old. And she went ahead and had it done. He's weeping in the store. Gee. Weeping. He had me pray for him. He said, what do I do? What do I do? I said, well, you, you've already told God you were sorry, you know, that you did that. And I said, your baby is waiting for you in heaven because right. now you have given yourself to Jesus Christ. Then he drops his big mop broom thing and started shouting in the store. He didn't care who hears him. He said, <laughs> really? I'm going to have my baby. I'll get my baby. I'll get my baby. It would just hurt his soul. His whole soul was wounded because that baby was taken from him to think he never would see him. And I said, yes, you, you need to name your baby. <laughs> it was a little boy. <laughs> he picked a name right there in this convenience store and started Amazing. thanking God that the father would welcome him into the throne room, put him on his lap, a little tiny, or hold him in his hands, somewhere so small. And he said, your dad just named you. Oh my you God. have a dad. And that little baby was shouting for joy and laughing. He was laughing. You know, he was hugging the hand of the father. He was so small. He's yeah. Um, yeah. And so he was rejoicing. All of the throne room starts rejoicing because now this baby will be given to this father who now his heart has been healed. He had no sadness or grief in him when I left. All he could do is thank you, thank you, thank you. I said, you thank Jesus Christ for the price he paid so that you could do this. And your baby will be taken well care of. And they will be waiting for you at the gate when you get there one day. Those babies are a baby from the time of conception, not when they're born. Why do you think the doctors who are wanting the babies to be born, the mother wants this baby, they go on regular, you know, they go to regular appointments and they get scans made. You can actually see the little babies now. And so they, they track them from the time, you know, maybe starting about four or six weeks when it's just a little tiny thing. I know one time when I had gone for my regular appointment and uh, – <laughs> I didn't know that I would have any more children. My husband, we were supposed to have one more. And so we did. We got we got pregnant. And uh, God had told me, you'll have three daughters five years apart. And that's what I did. I had five years apart. Um, they all dance. That's their gift. They're, they're dancers. They dance, you know, before God all the time. They dance and worship. And it says, dance is a gift that binds the enemy in fetters of iron. That's how powerful. If you do dance worship, you're binding the enemy in fetters of iron. And so God rejoices. They have dance in the throne room. You know, the angels dance and worship. I see them on platforms and churches. And the one I was just at, the angels came down from heaven, joined them on the platform. They were worshiping. They were playing instruments. During the worship, it was so powerful. But that, that's the way heaven operates. That's how heaven operates. God is about life and life more abundantly. But your you know children what? are in heaven, being cared for in many beautiful ways. They have fun. They know who you are. They're taken to the portal where they can look down. And on your birthday, they'll actually sing happy birthday to you. So These are little good. babies. Either you they were miscarried or else they, they were aborted. Or yeah, I was going to ask that. Uh, I them. thought I was going to say, before we leave this subject, since you're talking about from the moment of conception, they are a baby. That's There's right. been multiplied millions and millions in my, uh, who have lost a baby. My wife and I did when we were young. Uh, talk about that for anyone that hasn't heard you, if you if you can. 
if you will. Yeah, the father was giving me revelation on the scripture that says, I knit you together in your mother's womb. And he said, I'm going to give you a revelation on that. This is from the mind of God, not man. Man has tried to prove every way they can. It doesn't matter. They feel nothing. They're not anything. They're just a lump of something. That's a lie from hell. Mm -hmm. At the time of conception, this is the way God planned it. At the time of conception, a little he takes a little spirit of life from himself. We lived in the Father. The word clearly says that. It says he is our Father, and he does carry us inside of him. And Holy Spirit will take that little tiny baby, little tiny baby, spirit of life. He comes down to earth and knits and attaches it. That's him knitting together us in our mother's womb. He attaches that little spirit and soul to the mother in the womb. And then life begins in that womb. Mm -hmm. At that moment, that child is a baby that is growing in the womb from that moment. So even at a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, you know, two months, three months, and you can see that the mother's womb is growing. That is a baby. That's not yeah. a something. It is a child sent from God to bless those parents. You don't just raise children. You're shaping the soul of that child to live the way God needs them to be. And they have a gift in them. God sent everybody with a gift, a beautiful gift. So don't take that gift from those children. But I really want to encourage you, if you miscarried a baby, that was a real baby. Even if you miscarried it three weeks, four weeks, that's still a baby. Their guardian angels take them back to heaven, give them back to the father. They're raised in these beautiful nurseries. They don't look like, trust me, they're not look like nurseries here. Beautiful things. They get to experience things. That little baby, no matter how small, can sing, laugh, talk, and dance. It's heaven. It is heaven. Their little spiritual body grows so slowly that when you get to home to heaven, even as 50 years later, they'll still be a small baby. And, yes, and at that tiny little baby, it's talking and singing yeah, it's and talking dancing and, singing and walking. and singing and dancing. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Because, you know, I think, of, yeah, I keep thinking of this. I know they're not, they're not pooping diapers in heaven. No, they but, don't have diapers. <laughs> but, they don't need but, diapers. But they don't be have happy, diapers. happy, happy and talking and discussing or whatever yes. babies do yes. in heaven. Yes. You know, they do. And they make friends with other babies that are there, that come there. Wow. Um, they have special angels. There's a whole tribe of <laughs> angels are made in tribes. The ones Gabriel has, the ones that Michael have, the warrior, you know, archangel. They all have one purpose, and that's to fight against evil and wickedness. But Gabriel has the messengers, the couriers. They bring the body parts, care, care for the babies. They nurture the flowers and the stuff in heaven. They have many different um, duties in heaven. And God picks the right one for the right, the right thing that he needs to be done. But they'll hold these little babies even in their hand. And, and they'll cradle them and they'll just rock them and sing songs from God. And that breath of God nourishes that little baby in their hand. Um, but the first thing he does is he has to heal their heart. I mean, they just went through being aborted. And they had just taking been. Taking the life of that baby. But, and it did feel pain, but God heals them. That Their whole little spirit is healed uh, so that just, they, they can't even, they don't even think and, about that anymore. They just know that they have parents who are praying if they don't know Jesus. They're praying for your salvation. I was going to ask that. Didn't you say they, they immediately, upon uh, being taken to heaven, immediately forgive their parents? Is something like that? I don't want to. They do. They absolutely forgive their parents. They do forgive their wow. parents. They wow. don't they don't hold anything against you. They're not up there hating you. They're up there loving you. You need to understand the, the love of God. There's nothing like it. It surpasses anything you ever thought love was. And your parents are, are Christians and they go to heaven. They actually get to help raise that baby. They'll visit it at first, but at one point that God will let them take them to, to their mansion. Oh, wow. And so you're raising that baby. So, so they're not always in the nursery. Yeah, that's right. So in, in my case, for instance, Doreen and I, we lost a baby when it, was this, it would have been our third child. Yes. Uh, and then later Christopher came on and God kind of redeemed that. But my parents, uh, my mom went to heaven a year and a half ago now. That's she right. and my father could be watching over our baby. Oh, they they totally are watching over. They they are the grandparents, and they will call them their grandparents. I mean, Dreen's parents and my parents, obviously. Uh, right. In Dreen's case, she has two sets of parents because one she 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 passed she she was in an accident at six and lost her parents. 
Mm-hmm. Then her second parents that raised her, they're both their parents. So anyway, that's a different subject, but but they're all could be taking care of and sharing that baby and having family family. members will visit these little babies. You know, some of them, like I said, are so really small um, because they were they were they were miscarried at the beginning. of. When you say they stay small, how small do they stay? They would end up. I think they wouldn't grow any further. Even had been 50 years, that baby would still be about this big. Okay, you could hold it in your arms and rock it and you know, like, things, a, like, an, eight, you like an eight to 10 pound baby or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. And some are a little bit older because in the parent's heart, if they see their child seven and eight years old, it'll be seven and eight. God oh, it's whatever it they, like whatever vision the parent has. Of Especially the, child. the mother. <laughs> well, I would think so. Yeah. My mom yeah. had three miscarriages. Um, and so she always, I've seen them in heaven. They didn't talk to me, but I've seen them in heaven. So they'll look like they're like seven or eight. They're not little babies. My mom always saw them, you know, partially grown. Rebecca and Rachel and Joel are there. <laughs> they're in heaven right now. And we always said, that's why we said we had 15. They're still our children. They're still our siblings. They're still yeah. our siblings. Yeah. It's not like they were a somebody or something. Our family is connected with our whole tribe. And so we're not, we know they're there. We know they're up there declaring over us. But you have to understand God is merciful also. And that it could never get, you can be forgiven for it. And your child is already forgiven you. Do the you hope uh, broadcast, yeah. if nothing else, I hope it helps those. Who right. saw, and guess what, Steve? They, won't, they will not lose the gift they were given when he sent them here. If it was supposed to be, you know, a baker, they'll be a baker. If it was to be, I don't really? know, or else. Oh, yeah. If they were going to be an architect, if they're going to be a designer, if they were going to be an artist, or whatever it was that they God chose them to be that gift. I'm a photographer. When I get to heaven, I'll be a photographer. I'm excited. Jen will be a photographer. We're both photographers. That's a gift God put in us. It's not a gift he gave us. It's the gift we are. You become that gift. Your gifts and callings are without repentance. God's not going to take away that gift he gave you. And you will get to use it in heaven if you never did. If you were to lead orchestras or you're a composer, you're a music writer, I could just go on and on. If you were going to hold rodeos when you got, that was your passion. If you wanted to be a pilot and that was your passion, you'll still get to complete that when you get to heaven. And so I was going to, before we leave too far, what we were talking about also, the, the people who have, let's say they're, they're waffling between all of the wicked things they have done. Is there any hope left for any of those who on this earth who have done that? Can, they, can any of those still yet repent? Or, or is it just about up, time up? Or I think that God is merciful. I think they can repent for him. He'll, he will take it. I know, you know why I say that? Because the word says that God desires even the vilest sinner be saved. Yeah, and he doesn't that. send people to hell, people. He doesn't send them. They choose to go there. You choose to go to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. And yeah. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. I mean, that's a powerful thing. I, I finally get, figured that out one day. God doesn't send anyone to hell. They he send themselves yes, by they their do. choice. They choose hell or they choose heaven. That's all there is, right? That's the it. There's only two places. There's well, no other yeah. place. If you want, you know, all, all you pro-choice people, it works both ways. You get to choose heaven or hell. God's not going to send it. You, you just choose it. You, know? you choose it. You do choose it. But you can choose Jesus Christ. I mean, if he says the violent sinner, my one brother... Because he didn't have any fear, they, 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 they'd be the, he'd be the one they'd choose to uh, come. I mean, these are well, well-known, wicked, evil people, and um, he goes to talk to them about Jesus. And there's like three sets of bars you can't even get up to where. Oh, you can't are. even touch him. You told a story, Cat, once about your your brother ministering to the to the guy in prison. Yes. And he, and he told him something about was it a pet or something. It was a stuffed bear. Do you want to? Do you want to tell that story? Because by the way, it. they just told me there's twenty one thousand people watching live, which is a pretty rare number it's live. Good. So yeah, yeah. There, there's some people that would be blessed by that. Yes, yes. Uh, one of the times I don't remember the name of the prisoner. Yeah, 
felt my brother was just standing there, and he's about my size. He's not going no. Now he says in the spirit he's six foot, but but in the natural he's about five seven, five eight, and he'll just walk up. Um, he doesn't dress in suits, by the way. He has yeah. his own clothes that he wears. He's got his leather jacket, and you know he's um, he's a pretty tough character. He's pretty tough inside because God, he used to be tough. Now he never hurt anybody in his whole life. He just didn't, but he was still a tough character, and. Um, and he'd go up to the bars and he'd start talking to these people about and they would scream at him. The demons and the people would scream at him oh. from inside him. And then he would tell the devil to shut up. <laughs> he wouldn't let the devil speak. He really? said, You're not speaking, shut up. And he said, I'm speaking <laughs> to him. I'm speaking to the one who's standing before me. And then they would try to terrify. They would try to terrify. This is what they do. They, the enemy in them wants to make you terrified, even if they're in prison. And so he would just kind of lean forward and he would stare my brother. I'm with, he had such a hate and evil in him. My brother would just look at him. He, my brother would not move a muscle, but he would just be looking at them. And the power of God was on him because he was anointed for that. And pretty soon he looked so long, always the prisoner would look down. They couldn't look into, you know, God who was in him. They couldn't look into his eyes. Then he began to talk to him about God. And what hell was like. He's seen hell. And, and why he had listened to the enemy. And he'd been a fool to listen to the enemy. Then he had used him with the whole purpose all along. You know, the things he got him to commit. That was Satan's plan was to get him off the planet. He didn't want him here. And usually if you have a great future, usually a lot of people in prison are highly anointed people. And the enemy's doing everything he can to keep them out of real life. And so, but this guy had really done some bad things. And so my brother began to talk about, then he began to talk about the love of God, how far reaching the love is, how far reaching the mercy is that he still can have mercy given to him or offered to him. If he wants it, he'd have to choose it. And then he said, no matter, then he starts talking about his, because he's also extreme. He's a prophet. He also got to show him his life when he was young. My brother would begin talking to these, this prisoner and tell him this was your life. And he would say what he went what he went through, how he was abused as a child, very abused, and horrible things done to him, and even as a little child, like three and four. And when he was little like that, he had his favorite little stuffed bear that would comfort him. He said it would comfort him. It was just a little stuffed animal. And he loved that little bear. And I forgot what had happened to the little bear, but somehow one of the eyes had fallen off the little bear. I don't know. I think his dad ripped it off or something because his dad was real. His dad was wicked. And he's being raised in a wicked household. Jeez. And so he never had any love. He didn't know what love was. And uh, so he never could give love to people or even think what love was. When my brother started talking about this little bear, he's telling the prisoner, you had this little bear, stuffed bear. And he was your only comfort. And your dad uh, tore him out of your hands one time and plucked something off. I think it was the eye. And threw it on the ground. The little boy kept it and he hid it for a long time. This stuffed bear. And then one day his dad had been, I don't know if he was drunk or on drugs or what he was. He would go to look for him to beat him. This is what happens. A lot of times this is why people turn out like that. All they do is suffer. They don't know love. They don't think anybody loves them at all. But he took the little bear and I think he threw it in the fire. He said, you won't have him anymore. And that little boy cried for months. About, by this point, this prisoner is weeping. This big, tough, wicked person is weeping uncontrollably because my brother's talking about the little bear that was the only thing he thought ever loved him. Then he began to tell him, you're telling me the truth. You are, you're, you're seeing correctly. I had a little bear, and I love that little bear. That's where the hate started. And he said, then I just thought nobody cares. And he started, oh, he just listened to the enemy, committed crimes, but he never stopped thinking about that little bear. Gee. My and so my, my brother was about to wrap it up because he didn't, he wouldn't stand there for hours and talk to him. He, he didn't need to. He'd just tell him the truth. This is what you were. This is what happened to you. This is why you're in here. And the last thing he said was, well, I want you to know that if you receive him, when you get to heaven, your bear will be waiting. Unbelievable. Oh, man. Your little bear will be waiting for you. Just like, oh, the love of this man, man, he got saved. He got born again. Because of the little bear, because of the love of God, 
that he thought nobody loved him in all that time. All that time, he said, I didn't know who God was. I, I didn't know I had someone to love me, but he said, I can't think of anything that would move my heart more. The thing I love the most is God is willing to let me have that back. I want him. I want to know him. So he got, he got saved. I think he was, I think he was um, electrocuted. Wow. I think that was, that was his punishment for the crimes he had committed. He went to heaven. He went to heaven. He got born again. I'm quite sure he's got his little stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah. you've got to see the side of God that is fierce, but you see the side. I of mean, God it's like loving. it's like if you do only only evil, only only horrible hell awaits you. But at, if you make that one decision for Christ, that's right. It goes from from a severe punishment to a severe mercy and yes. grace and real love. mercy and grace. Yeah, that's right. unbelievable. What a God, right? What a God. So these there. are days where people who never yeah. saw evil before, mm. they they don't know what to do. They're experiencing it. There's a lot of people filled with fear, mm. you know, yeah. thinking, well, if, you know, I'm just going to say it out, if controlled, I have to live a, a, a communist kind of life, a dictator, have a dictator. Yeah. They already act like they are dictators. Yeah. The other thing they've been doing all along is they make cr criminal laws legal. I don't know how else to put it. They'll take crimes and make them legally okay. And yet they'll take innocent people, just innocent people, have been thrown into prison and in jail uh, with made-up things. Of course, they're really good at lying. But, hey, they serve the father of lies, right? And so yeah. these courts, and God's going to judge these judges and all these people, these wicked people running these courts or being empowered. They, they've sold out to the wicked and the evil. They've been unjustly, unjustly putting people in jail and in prison that are innocent people. Even Trump is innocent of all the stuff. Could you imagine having one person doing the kind of crimes they have made up about him? Yeah. And they want to put him, they're so terrified of him. This, yeah. I think I already talked a little bit about the fact that the, the Democrat, one of the higher ups, I somehow I got on an email list or something and they sent me an email and I went, wow. I didn't answer. I didn't answer. They texted me and sent me that thing. And I said, I know you don't know me. You would have never sent this to me. I'm just letting you know right now, you're losing. And God will have mercy on you if you repent and think God will let you get away with it. Don't ever send me anything again. And I'm going to delete you when I'm done sharing this with you. But you're on the, you're on the side of darkness and evil. Even your own family cannot stand to be around you because you have become so wicked. Wow. So you're isolating yourself right now. Hell isolates you from everything except torment and torture. But God brings families together in heaven who receive his son. And I'm letting you know, he knows everything. He knows everything about all of you out there doing that. You've hid nothing from him. And he will make sure it is found out. And you can't go after God. You can't touch or harm him. But he knows everything about you right now. And if I were you, I'd get on my face and start crying out to God. Because I'm telling you, those people you're serving mm. hate everybody. They hate, they do it for money. They don't, human life means nothing to them. They don't care about anybody. And you want those people to win, you'll lose everything. You'll lose it all. But God's not going to let that happen. I know God, and he has assured me, he has already won. God has won. Trump has already won. You know he won, and he's going to get what God's going to let him have. He is going to be president of this country. So good. So powerful, powerful, powerful. Man. Well, Kat, um, what would you like to do? We can pick a new subject. We can ask you questions. Uh, I want to make sure that anything else that's on your heart, I share before we do any of that. I just really, um, my, my, my heart is really... Um, for people who've lost a lot of stuff, their families' lives have been taken from them because of those who are trying to run this country. Yeah. Even a lot that they let across the border, the, the whole purpose for doing that was, uh, which is illegal, <laughs> that they are given citizenship to these illegal aliens. They're giving them the right to be a citizen of this country. And they're taking our money that we use in America to pay things or pay for stuff, you know, for America itself. They're taking money 
because they don't have money. They're not spending their money. I'm talking to the ones high up in authority that don't have the right to do that. They're making criminal laws um, legal. And so not only are they legalizing their citizenship, which there is a protocol. You can't just go in the store and buy a license or something. I think this is I'm an American citizen. The Constitution and our Bill of Rights is clear about how you do that. You have to go through a protocol. You've got to study about this country. You have to go to classes to learn things about this country. You have to sign papers saying you're willing to obey by the laws of our country, not the illegal laws that they're making and putting on the books. They'd like to do away with the, They want to do away with everything, the flag, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, our history. They want to take it all out of the history books. They want you to be raised as a child. They want you to know only what's wicked and evil, that it's okay to do that. And so they don't want to just run the country, even like a normal country. They want to defile and, and defile it. That's what their plan is. But being an American citizen is an honor and a privilege. And there's really a list of people who are applying to be that. They're still going through the process. They're doing what's legal. We're not saying you can't ever be one, but you have to go to the protocol. They check your record to make sure you're not a criminal coming to our country or that you don't have other plans that are Ill, Ill, illegal. Or you don't want to bring drugs in the country or stuff like that. You want mm -hmm. to do things that are harmful to the people. You won't get citizenship. But what they're doing is allowing them to have citizenship when they don't even deserve it. They've not applied for it. This is part of the left's plan to take over this country is by using millions of people they've let across the border. And if you vote for those people who are now trying to run this country, you're saying, yes, criminals in our land. We want to give up all of our property. We don't want a future because they'll take that away, too. So vote for who wants to make this country great, not for himself but for the people of this country. And yes, at this moment in his life, he has received Jesus Christ. That'll really irritate the left when I tell them that. But he has. And when he was almost, he changed in that instant. He changed in that instant. He came out. He, there, was a, there was a humility that did, did come out for sure. Yes, and he did. It, what I've reminded people of is that he will never be Pastor Trump. Even if, if you want to be Pastor Trump, he's not going to be that... We need he doesn't to have, want to be Pastor Trump. Yeah, we well, need him edge. to be that leader of this country yeah, yeah. and do what God made him to do. Yeah. No, he doesn't. And he, I know people shout, you know, you're the greatest person in the world. I've actually heard him say this, but you're the greatest person in existence right now. And he'll say in the microphone, no, I'm not. That's good. I'm not the greatest person in the world. And they'll yell, well, who is he? And he'll say, he is Jesus Christ, the son wow. of the living God. Love it. I he love is it. over all. And he knows that. He knows that. That irritates and terrifies the wicked. <laughs> I mean, it makes him more wicked. Now, okay, now he's got God. It's even worse. No, it's better. <laughs> but he That's does know that God is over his life and he knows he's protected. He saved his life already three times that he knows of. I'm quite sure a lot of other times that they had planned on doing something have failed. So I just know the things that are going to happen will be justice, liberty, and freedom. Write it down somewhere. Write it down. It's going to happen. Justice, liberty, and freedom is coming. They're sitting in will be taken away. Some will, they'll be tried for criminal acts, traitorism. You know, that they became traitors to this country. It came against everything the country stands for. They should have found another country they wanted to go to that was already in that position. Because this country, it belongs to the Most High God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and he has plans. And there are millions of believers in this country who pray to God every day, and he hears their prayers. Your prayers, I pray, are to the right God, not the fake gods, not ones who you call God, and they are not God. So I just know that we, God's got plans for us. He's got plans for this country and not just for this country to irritate you even more. He has plans to shift governments. What's it with an S? Shift governments that are evil governments to shape that nation for himself. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. So this world for some time will be living on the light of God and not more evil than love and life of God. You know, we've uh, we've had a value in our lives. And before we knew how bad and evil some people are and who they worship, we've just, 
you know, Americans have become live and let live and don't bother anyone too much about where they are. But in these last four years, we're hearing so many things. I even heard, I'm not going to say the name of the show. There's a very famous comedy show. It doesn't Mm -hmm. air anymore. It's all that series is over, but it was very funny. And someone was there in the studio and they had, they had trouble with a camera or something one day. So they had a, like a 15, 20 minute break where they had to wait for them to fix it. And in order to help their, them, um, be successful with fixing the cameras the the actors who were all on set during that scene started praising lucifer worshiping satan I, right there in front of the crowd and and in our, my wildest imaginations i would have thought surely that's there's not really people who worship satan and are so into it that they'll do it in front of other people and not even care and believe that by their worship of satan their show will prosper imagine what happened to those people uh, anyway so in other they, words there, there really are people that wicked see there really are people that wicked they are They're, they've actually sold out uh, i said on another show you cannot sell your soul to the devil no matter what he tells you he can't he can't own your soul you give it to him and he can have it, but you can't sell it to him. You can take it back, it. so to speak. If you if if you've given it to him, thinking you sold your soul, you can still take it back and receive Christ, right? Yes, After. and if you receive Christ, it would, it would be controlled by Satan. That's the best way to say it. You give enough of yourself, so much to the darkness, you don't care about the light. You don't care about people. It's like anyone else. Your brain gets seared. You go into hate and evil and wickedness and you go into the darkness and you're allowing Satan to control your soul. Okay. Yeah. But once you repent to God for that, Satan can't do anything with your soul. He has to let it totally go. He can't have any part of it. He can, he'll try to control you and you'll have to say, no, I've given myself to Christ. You got born again. That control is severed from him completely because of the blood of Christ sets you free and Satan doesn't have any right to control you. Yeah. So back to what you just said then a few minutes ago about uh, Trump is coming back and it's a good, it sounds like an acceptable desire at least, if not a prayer, Lord, let him get that four years back so, yes. so that that would then be equal to eight more years starting now. Do you expect, um, I don't know if God shows you any of this or if this is just a faith level, do you expect there to be a fight after today's election or is it is the fight going to continue for a while or or do you have no idea whatsoever what what would you say oh i think they'll still keep trying and pushing it but from the from the moment this happens and uh trump in the natural without any of the garbage of the evil would be claimed would would be announced to be president of the united states there's no way they can come even close to the votes no way ever can they come close to the people who uh, want him as president. They want this country. They want this country to stay the way they want this country. They don't want to lose the country. They don't want their lifestyle taken. They want a future in this country the way they remember it. And even though you had to make choices, there was always bad things going on because there's still a devil in this world, uh, but not like it is now. They're getting a taste of, they're getting a small taste of what will sim- be similar in the perilous times and um, then, but that's not now. It's not the not, it'd be far worse even in those days. Yeah. What will be going on? But but people want a life. They don't want many people. Most people want a life. They love their families. They they love their job. Yeah. They're enjoying what they're doing. They want to keep their house. They don't want to lose everything. And so when they realize this really is the plans of the left and the Democrats, and I can say that they chose it. They chose these people to be a part of them. And they did it and they're allowing it and they're broadcasting and they're saying it. Even some of their ads and stuff, if you just see, and these people are lying in their ads, of course they are. They want to make sure that they look acceptable. Even though they've already admitted all the evil and wickedness they want, they want to look acceptable for those who are moderate people. But the conservatives, they they would like to wipe them out. They don't want anything to do with that. So it's the few trying to control the masses. Because honestly, the masses don't want those people running this country. I was listening to a podcast. I think it was this one guy. I won't say his name because I can't 100% be sure. But he said when this stuff all comes to light, 
after Trump's come back or whatever, and you find out who the really guilty parties are, he goes, you'll be stunned at how few people were running this whole show against right. Trump. That, that, that It's a smaller group than most people think, and everyone else is following them. So That's interesting right. Times, interesting times. It is a what, small group. I mean, they, yeah. they, never, they never had, where's their rallies with 50,000, 80,000 people? Where are their rallies? Yeah. The only rally they have is they have to have celebrities come and perform, and it's really a celebrity performance, and people come to see that. Yeah, they're paid to come and do it, so people are going to come see them. And I've known even during some of these things they did before when Hillary was running, running, and they did that concert thing with popular people. And um, as soon as the concert was over, concert was over, and they were going to speak about their politics, the people left. They yeah, were yeah. Only there for that, they didn't come to hear them speak yeah. about their plans for democracy. They don't I have. I mean, that's yeah, that's what the left tried. I mean, Kamala. Is they so did, unpopular that yeah. they might invite all these, the you know, these artists like um, Beyonce on one of them. I think, yeah, supposedly, what's the other gal's name? The singer, I can't think of it. I always forget her name. There's several, uh, there's several Hollywood, yeah. But I mean, then, then, the, then they get a big crowd for that, That's and right. then, then their humility is com humiliation is complete, like you said, when everybody starts walking off. They walk out and leave. They don't care, and these they, those people just don't care either. Yeah, they they like what they want to do, but they don't want to hear about all of it. Is so, it okay in your in your mind for believers? How do I want to phrase this question? Okay, I'm just going to put myself in there. There are some people that have been so wicked that I believe personally inside that they forfeited their right to life. And of course, God is in charge of all life, but there are some people that are so wicked that I want, if if I heard that they were going to be before a firing squad, I would probably, I wouldn't rejoice, but I would say, Lord, thank you for removing them from the earth. What's it okay <laughs> to feel like? I can you're, tell you right now, Steve, there's a lot of people who would rejoice. Yeah. It really yeah. is. I mean, they have been. They well, have there was been, some scripture I'd seen once. Whole it, cities. They've destroyed whole cities already. Yeah. yeah that's true. I'm playing with my pen. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Do you need sorry, to do it? It's crooked. It? And I can see that it's crooked. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, I just put it on really fast because I had the, the studio czar over there. <laughs> Jen, get that pin on. Get that pin on. We got her to even get out of here. Yes, she's not really. This is like her. Um, we have um, the person who used to do this for us got married, and so he he moved or left. But we just uh, Jen take that place for a while. But I think she's done with her. <laughs> she needs to get on with her kids' book. And actually, Walter, who's doing all the illustrations, has turned it over to her. So she actually has a flash drive with all the illustrations for her entire children's books, a whole series that she's writing about it. And so that's ready. And we've had help offered by Hank Kuhneman, by Paul Crouch Jr. They want to do little movies of her book for children and make gardening movies out of it and everything like that. And so um, she, that would be a lot more fun for her than this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So she's well, you... pushing me the whole time in the same way, because, you know, as a prophet, I'll tell everybody out there, as a prophet, you can't live by man's time. It's not, not like we do things on purpose or hurt people like we're late or something like that. I can't tell you how many prophets God would have them show up late at meetings when they'd already talked about stuff. They'd walk up and take the mic. They're not being rude. They're doing what God said to do. Well, I and mean, then they would share what God had to say, right? And if yeah. God is speaking to me, and if he's here speaking to me, I can't say, excuse me, God. Well, I, I was going to mention that because that happened with me and you one time a few years back. Yeah. You may not remember it, but I, I went. It, you were supposed to be on. I was going to pick you up at the hotel. Yeah, was in Albany, Oregon, and they they rang your room. They, I mean, they but whatever it did, my phone would answer. Finally, you picked it up. Yeah, and I said, "Cap, you're supposed to be speaking right now," and you know the church was only a few minutes away. Yeah, and and you you said, "Oh, well, I've just been Jesus. You know, the Lord's been in the room with me, or something like that." Do you remember that? Yes, I you do. Know, <laughs> and I'm going, "Okay, in the room talking to Cat versus racing to the. I mean, I think <laughs> I'd go with the Lord." 
<laughs> you know, most prophets who know each other, they know they all that, that that happens to all of us. I mean, it just happens to all of us. Yeah, uh, some more than others, but because I have continual conversations, yeah, it's almost like uh, they give me a break to go eat or something like that, or they just come with me where I'm eating and talk to me. I'm talking about the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm yeah, talking about those, it. those, those, our God, our God, talk to me. And they're letting me know this is about to happen. Well, I don't want to leave if I was going to get to say it online, if I was going to get to share it. And I actually did get some stuff while I was in there getting ready. I'm trying to get ready. And then, of course, my, the person who's assigned to me that we pay to be my um, my personal assistant to help You're me right. get ready for these meetings, she travels with my husband and I and helps me. Like we went to Maryland, she came too. She gets her own room. She gets to eat. Nice. She, drives us she drives us around Good. and takes us to get us there and everything like that and helps me. If I need something, she goes and picks it up for us. And so we do have somebody like that. But so That's she perfect. had to not, she was supposed to be here today, but she wasn't. So she had to have a minor eye surgery done that her eye doctor said is real important to get it done. And I prayed for her, but she she went to have that done. So I was kind of on my own. So I hope my hair, I know it looks it different. It looks pretty good to me. I but, did it. Know, I'm a guy, but what do I know, right? I'm a guy, I right? did this, and I'm like, I'm, so I'm, but see, I can see myself. Remember before when I couldn't see me, I could see y'all. But seeing myself, I'm like, oh, my gosh, look at that hair. That's just a wreck. It's in my eyes. <laughs> and this is the thing the camera is different than me here it has to be backwards right? everything's I, backwards i don't know how to explain that people but it's backwards and i'll go to touch i'll see something not right and i touch it but i'm touching the wrong side of my shoulder this is the real me people this is not the revelator talking this is well, me exactly talking. when i adjust my tie my <laughs> hand wants to go this way but instead i, I have to go I'm this gonna, way I'm i just like, have to go by the picture and move it till it's straight and so I'm going to just stop. Jen's, Jen's looking at me over there saying, stop playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we're at, it's, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. And you see, I tried to straighten it and I did it just the opposite. The camera should, I don't yeah. understand. I'm a photographer, but I don't know all of yeah, this. Yeah, well, you can't work on. backwards. You'd have to be a dentist to work backwards <laughs> through mirrors and things. Okay, hey, I have. if you've got time for some questions, uh, yeah. I have a related, if they've served this up to me, that we're going to turn it into one question. Several viewers have asked this today. Does right. the baby go to heaven regard? <laughs> I mean, I, I want to chuckle, but it's a serious question. And you'll understand what I mean by that. Does the baby go to heaven regardless of the denomination of Christianity the mother was? And what does God think of all the denominations? So you see, I almost want to chuckle, but it's a sincere question. Somebody really wanted it is, to know that. It is sincere, but I can tell you right, right now. All babies go to heaven. Yeah. The babies, uh, they come to a point in their life and um, where they're, they're having to be, they have to have counsel, direction, you know, get direction, affection, correction in their lives. They're too little to make decisions, sound decisions for themselves. I don't know where that, that age of understanding, the Bible talks about after the age of understanding, they are responsible for making their choices for their own soul. Yeah. As a little tiny child, they, they don't yeah. have that ability. Like I have grandkids that are like three and four and stuff. They still can't reason that out. I don't know what age it is. I don't know if it's 10, 11. And I think it almost would have Holy Spirit is informing me right now. It's always different. The age yeah, for, different. depending on the child, right? Yeah. It's not about them if they're seven, eight, nine, or ten or eleven, even is the the mental capacity to understand as well as the heart capacity. If their soul is beginning to operate and have understanding, there comes a time that God says, beyond this point, you will have to make decisions for your salvation. In other words, there's a time when they would have to make, but I can tell you this, all little children, even the littlest babies, I've seen some this big in heaven, and even they receive Christ as their Savior. Pardon he doesn't me, say, just, they, so he doesn't say they have to. He's not telling the children they have to. They want to receive him. Yeah. So he'll come visit them in the nurseries, and they will receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. They, they haven't had a chance to sin. <laughs> when I got saved at four, I thought, well, I took a cookie. <laughs> well, and this person, this person that they're asking this about the denomination. Oh, the denomination has nothing honestly, to do with denomination. Yeah, can I just say this, though? The question, if it's taken to its fullest extent, would then have to go to, okay, if you're an adult and 
and uh, you go to heaven, does God does God care which denomination you were of? It's the same question. So what yeah. about if you're an adult? There is no Baptist center or Episcopal road. There's no <laughs> town that says, oh, man, all my jokes are out. I'm just going to say it. This is Catholic town, you know, or if it's like, you know, interdenominational town. <laughs> this is where you live in this section in heaven. If that is out. <laughs> that's out that's out and i can tell you though uh you no know, if you they call satanism a religion it's not yeah <laughs> it's a yeah false that's, religion that's not a you know but there are people that are raised that way they're raised in it but even even though some are raised in it they don't want it it's just something inside of them they don't want it but there comes a time when you yourself decide Regardless of what religion you are, I mean, there's a lot of there's sinners still in every religion. There's still people who aren't born again or receive Christ. They make that decision for themselves. But as far as a child goes, every child up to the age of um, accountability, every one of them, they all go to heaven. Not a single one of them. There are no babies in hell, people. No babies in hell. Very good. Now, uh, they're serving me other questions. So if, once I think we've got it, I'll maybe look at the others. You guys have put two different things like Bruce Springsteen and J-Lo. I have no idea what you're asking, so let me go to the next one. You can, <laughs> you can ask me again. This one says, Cat um, They would be taken to heaven. They would receive Christ as their Savior in, in heaven, and that's the way that works. But there's a, a, a time of accountability. Now, the, I might as well add this. Yeah. Some children are born with issues that they had trauma during their birth, Oh, or wow. they just were born with issues in their brain. They never went beyond a child. There's adults like that. And they're right. It's hard sometimes to, to um, God just gives them special parents um, where they, they always think like an eight year old or 10 year old, they would never on purpose do things that were wrong. They wouldn't, they're being raised in their mind, in their own understanding. They're like 10 and that may be when they're 40 or 50. When they pass, it's like a 10-year-old passing. Yeah. It's not like a 40 or 50-year-old. They would still go to heaven, and they would still receive Christ when oh, they got Oh, okay. They so they're like a child, really. Yeah, there All are right. people that, that happens to them. Okay, anyway. Dave, uh, a person, a, a guy named Dave. <laughs> you are so paranoid about your pink hair. It looks great. I was it was getting in my eyes, and I'm like, where are my eyes? I'm like, <laughs> if I don't look, maybe I can do it. I don't know. You know what? We're just going to leave it there. Let's just push it over. Jen's probably over there laughing herself silly. You can help me. No, that's okay. It's fine. Just so okay. you all know, I am not. I'm not the greatest brain on earth. That is not me. Okay. I graduated in the middle of my class. I did my best. I was always a good kid. I didn't want to go into the world, and my dad, you know, was, my dad was my mentor. He was precious. I loved him, but anyway, you'll just have to put up with my hair. Yeah, but. you consider yourself put up with. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's here's, see if there's another question we can answer. Okay, so here's the next question. Dave says, I've heard that unforgiveness turns into a, turns to poison. I think I have forgiven somebody. Then thoughts come back in my head. God, I want to forgive this person. Why do I have these thoughts come up again and again after I've forgiven them. So I would just say loose it from your soul. Uh, sometimes the enemy puts thoughts in your mind. And it actually says in the Bible, take every thought captive that exalts itself above the throne of God. Those would be things the enemy is trying to stick in your mind. You know, a thought will just pass in your mind or something. Sometimes the enemy tries to put it there. Well, that's somebody, that thought is trying to exalt itself above what God wants. You wouldn't think that thought. It didn't come from you. That was from Satan saying, you just say, I evict all those thoughts. I cancel. So I'm not doing that. Get out, devil. <laughs> and, and with, don't we give don't, me your garbage thoughts. <laughs> you know, there's a whole teaching on loosing from yourself. But give them the words for loosing it from their soul, for their soul. Just like give them a sentence or two. How do they lose that? Yeah, because, and that is true, especially in the, the, the whole subject of forgiveness. And yeah. maybe somebody's been rotten to you so many times, maybe even years, and you finally say, well, God, I, I don't want it. You know, if you take those words and keep them, or you then come against that person, then Satan's going to mess with you anyway because you fell into the trap. He wants you to be angry. He wants you to retaliate to this person and be be cut away from each other or not knowing anything. Or you're going to bear a grudge. You don't want to do any of that, man. That's like being, that's like a, a big, what do they call it? 
a yoke. It's like you've got a big yeah. yoke on you, right? And that'll stay with you to get rid of it. So always choose to forgive. Just pray and say, Father, I choose to forgive so and so for these things that they did to me. And because I'm choosing to forgive them, I want to forget them also. Yeah. And God forgives us, they're thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. People, it is actually a place. He's thrown in the sea of forgetfulness. God never drags them back out. Don't let them be dragged back out in front of you because the devil will try to do that. You say, no, I choose with my will to loose those thoughts of anger, of, you know, that I want I want to pay them back. Any of those thoughts that would be against what God wants to say, I forgave them, so I loose from my soul and my will. I loose them with the keys to the kingdom. Come and get them heaven. I don't ever want to think about them again. And heaven literally comes down and pulls them out of you and it will be like that never happened. Yeah. People have heard my story where I was bedridden for four years and uh, I was completely incorrect in my approach. And I would I would begin to thinking that maybe I did this to myself through unforgiveness or something. So I confessed and confessed. I was in the bed for four years. I confessed hundreds of hours. Oh, <laughs> I did. Uh, but I hadn't even met you yet. It was yes. like I hadn't understand any of this. The light of this was going, but I had a long way to go to yes. understand that. And when I when I finally quit, by the way, I got sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. Wow. So and I, when I tell that story, there is no fruit in asking yes, God I, over and over and over and over and over for forgiveness. In case he's, right. and God later told me the re, as long as you were for doing that, Steve. You were, you didn't mean to, but you were accusing me of doing this to you. You're accusing yeah. me of putting this sickness on you. If you could just get your, uh, your repentance exactly right to the last motive, then, and so I couldn't respond to that. Mm -hmm. He had to wait till I just confronted him on his word and it had nothing to do with that. So anyway, I want to throw that out. Okay, here's another. Well, I see I have one more. You guys, give me any others if you've got one. Um, oh, oh, yeah, we can, we can take one more. Uh, I don't understand a question about the question about the performance. You'll have to. Okay. And okay. We don't normally do it this way. So Kat, how should we pray for the Trump family? Or, and I, I would change that to how should we pray and, or how should we decree for the Trump family? The way I do. <laughs> you decree. Right. I decree. I decree things over their lives, their protection, their safety, their finances, their property. I mean, I cover it. I'm going to make yeah. sure. And God wants me. He said, you need to declare over this. And if something's going on, I don't know is about to happen. He'll say, right now, you need to stop and declare over them. I just declare the blood of Jesus Christ over Eric and his family. If someone's coming against him or Don Jr., I'll say their name. If it's a specific thing, and sometimes it is. Uh, but or, or, but in general, like even last night, Father, I declare and decree over Trump, he will be successful in what you've sent him here for, that even his enemies will show favor to him. And even those who want to curse him, you're going to touch that person and let them bless him instead. That's scriptural. So then I've got blessings coming out of the mouth of those that want to curse him. Well, they'll stop saying anything because they don't want to bless them. So you have to understand not just that. I will command the host of heaven to go. I'll send like, I don't know, a million to protect Trump, all of his family, those who work with him, those who are legitimately sent by God to be a part of what he's doing, those who help Trump and all the stuff his campaigning is doing, anything that have to take care of his property, his family, anything. I send the host to protect all of them, to cover that, to expose anything that's being planned that is wrong against him, and then God to bless him. Then I'll speak blessings on his life, blessings on his family's life, fear or confusion or strife in his family or in his in his offices in jesus name and so i cover it all yeah, uh, and, and that's uh, probably the way you should be doing it so there's, since there's so many watching and they may not have heard this you know weeks ago when when you and i talked about your prayer life or whatever you clarified in that show that what you just described declaring and decreeing and da -da -da, and send this all you you said that was your prayer and in intercession, yes, right? That's it was. it's one and the same. That was your that was your quiet yeah. time. Some people conversation say, with God. Yeah, that's what it was. Talking to God. It was was that's the right. conversation. Yeah, it is. That yeah. was really instructive to me. Okay, Mackenzie said. Well, I guess out of kindness, I don't know why they would ask this question, but Pamela's saying, 
when they grow up and when 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 the kids grow up in heaven will they be adults on the new earth so i don't know why that's a question but uh, it, it depends on what they do grow slowly they don't just okay. stay a child forever okay. they're not babies or children forever they'll get i think there's an, an age of uh, an eternal age i call it it's around 20. when you're about 20 you look your best yeah and to me um and it's it's an ageless life um, but you will progress if you're a baby or a child when you pass, when you move to heaven, you will grow slowly and you will achieve, you know, some people, they couldn't, if they didn't grow eventually, uh, and get to be the gift God sent them to be, he, they're not going to lose that gift. Yeah. So in order for them to be able to do that, they would grow very slowly. I don't know, let's say maybe 200 years, our time would take them a, a time. I'm just doing this as a yeah. possible yeah. scenario. Yeah. In heaven, it could be like 200 years earth time before they finally reach that age of maybe 20, something like that. Yeah. But there's a lot of kids all over heaven. I mean, I've seen so many millions of them are in Really? Heaven. Wow. And I've seen them being instructed by... Um, one of the one of the the prophets of old, or like Abraham or somebody, wanted to spend time with. The, they'll just have a lot of the kids come, and they sometimes they do fun things together. Sometimes well, I was going to ask you that. Sounds like you could then have youth meetings and youth events, right? I know who the leader of all the youth is. Oh, who's that? It's Marissa, the one that I saw with her great grandfather in heaven, riding the roller coasters. Oh, really? She's yeah, like the leader or a youth leader. Yeah. The wow. youth leader. The youth leader. And, yeah. And he sent her to Melody. Um, that was her mom. That whole encounter I had is in book one um, where God had taken me and shown me her daughter in heaven. I didn't know them. I saw her walking with her great grandfather, which I found out was my pastor's dad. Now I right. knew him. I'm talking about the Zinks and Pastor Zink, Paul Zink, Sr. Um, he doesn't mind me talking about this because he knows uh, everything I'm saying is true. So the greatest witnesses I have to this this testimony is our my pastor, Pastor Paul Sink and Sharon Sink. They were my pastors. Well, they still are. They're kind of retired, but he travels a lot and still speaks. Uh, and Paul Jr. now is pastor of the church that I I, okay. I attended. And but they know all that story is true even when I didn't know what it was, that it was a reality. I didn't know who the people were when I saw them. And just the Lord said, I'm going to let you give Melody a, less, uh, a message about her daughter, Marissa, who is living in heaven. And right now her great grandfather is taking her on roller coaster rides. This is a good example of what I just shared when I'm caught up to heaven. That's the kind of thing I would get. And he put me in the place. He wanted me to see the people who are in heaven. And he tell me to move up so you can hear what they're saying. And I heard this young girl, she was a teenager. She was talking about her great grandfather. And she was saying, I wish I could tell my mom I loved her. I wish I could, you know, if I saw her, I'd kiss her again on both cheeks. These were comments. She was, but I have a photographic memory, so I remember all of that. And she said, you know, I want to let her know that I'm cheering her on from heaven now. She was a cheerleader on the earth in her eighth grade class. And so all these different things were little things that would mean something to Melody that she would know I had actually seen her daughter in heaven who had just passed away. But that's how that happens. He'll catch him up. He'll start talking immediately. This is why I brought you. This is why I want you to see this person right there and show me the person say, this is their name. And that's who they're with here in, here in heaven right now. And then explained about her life on the earth and stuff like that. So that's what he did. I didn't ask him to take me just whenever he, and yes, he still does. He still does do that to me. Well, He's I was going to ask you what, if, because you go up hundreds of times probably a year, but I mean, I when, what, not that you would know an exact percentage, but how much of that is to get some information to somebody on earth versus to learn something that you're going to share with like on something like this? What, how, what, how does it break down your visits? Are they all? It depends. Categories? Sometimes he'll take me to a place and there'll just be quite a few people in the place. It's about revealing that place, the okay. area in heaven that he wanted me to talk about, just to make people happy and get them excited to know there are things to do there. And even how heaven operates sometimes, he'll take me and show me that. But if it's specifically about a person, I always share it. I'll type it down and then I'll call the person. He'll give me the phone number sometimes. Really? Here's their number. Call them. Yeah. Well, he's God. He knows everything. Well, no, he's yeah, but I, yeah, no, I, I, it's just, it's so practical that it sounds earth, earthly or something. But yeah, of course he'd have the number. 
Yes. But, you know, yeah. Well, these <laughs> things, these things he's showing me are between heaven and earth. They are between yeah. heaven and earth going on, activities in heaven, how they're related to activities on the earth, things on the earth, how they're related to people that are in heaven already. And so he's, he's very detailed. And, and that's why he didn't give it to someone like my husband to do. You'd hear five minutes because he's not a detailed person, except in fishing. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't talk a lot. He thinks a lot and he knows a lot. But me, he, he took me from saying nothing to never stop talking. <laughs> and my family doesn't ask me, just so people know, I am not worshipped in my family. <laughs> I never was, not when I was part of the tribe of 15 or now. My family did not come up to me and say, oh, when did you go to heaven the last time? What happened? No, 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 no. They've heard so much already that I didn't, they don't, they don't ask. Everyone else out there does. Yeah. But they, well, they don't ask me. Yeah. Well, uh, by the way, having said that, what you just said is sometimes they'll show you a new place or something. Can yes. you think of a place that you'd want to, that you can think of that a lot of people have not heard about? There's quite a few places I've been to yeah. recently. Yeah. Uh, especially in my journeys, a lot of times on the plane, he'll talk to me or take me to heaven while I'm on the plane. Wow. He'll catch me up by my spirit and show me places in heaven or places in time. He does that a lot. And he also has been probably taking me as often into the future and show me things in the future, like how cityscapes will change. Even the um, architecture of buildings are going to change, relating heaven coming to earth. The apparel, the apparel that will be available to people, things like that. He'll show me stuff like that. But, um, but he, like I said, he never asked. He just, I'm just here one second and then up in heaven somewhere. The architecture, are there, are there uh, just as many tall sky, skyscrapers being developed or is it more of a spreading out thing? What, I think there's still going to be both, but I know that homes, the building architecture that's going to be big is round. What, which, the whole building? Yes, it won't be square. Well, it won't yeah. be a box, people. It's going to be amazing, even the way they have elevations. If you did architectural drawing, they would know what I meant when I said an elevation. Yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I know. Buildings what like a home has usually one roof line, unless they yeah. have a roof line and another one, and then maybe another one that juts out from that one. But you have depth in the elevation, so you have your roof line here. Then over here is another part of the roof of another room that would come out about eight feet. There'd be another roof over that. So there's elevations in these buildings, but they're all round. Every room is round. I know that That's sounds amazing. wild, but it was exciting. It's exciting. I mean, I've been in a couple thing rooms like that, but yeah, it's more like the Oval Office kind of, you know, yeah. everything. That's not that's oval, not round, but. Complete the service. throne room is round. The throne Do you room is mean round. in the sense that the not a, is the the whole abode is round? I think you're saying, but yes. are the rooms inside round as well, or is there, there are really some round? inside that are round? They would come off of the. Let's say, just say, I have some sketches I have made myself about places. I I can do some minor architectural drawings. I can even do the. Um, I can do. Um, different drawings of the inside, the interior of homes. I've also drawn things. Sometimes, now I was shown the offices we will be building one day and the building will be round, but the build, the offices inside will be like a shape of a pie like this. Because oh, the outer wall is round. And That's so an this room thing. would come off of a big common area, would be in a big common area. Yeah. This is how some of the mansions are. There's a huge common area. They could have many different things, and even that can be divided up. But it's basically round here. Then there's space between that and the outer walls that would be here. And then you would just separate it how you wanted them to. But I've seen very unique places where this part of the wall that's round, off of that wall would come a round room. Okay, and then there would be a different style room here. Then there would be another round. Is it room. All, all only about a new fashion, so to speak, or a new design, or is there some technological reason why round is better? Do you know anything about that? Round is better because number one, it's a lot more interesting. It has different lines in it. Uh, I'm very bored with square. Yeah. <laughs> I am yeah. myself because I've seen the, the the way that you can design things in heaven. Some things in heaven are designed like, let's say the home is not necessarily round, has rounded edges, but there's homes that go like this. They would start here. If I had my sketch pad, I'd be drawing like crazy, showing y'all. 
Yeah. But um, I even have a drafting table. But they would be like this. They'd come out like this, and they would be, and they would be a wave in this room. Really? They go up like this. But the whole house would be like that. The whole house would be like that. Very, very different. I, very unique. Sky I, mansions that go up on this big column. You step in and say third floor. And it zipped you right up to the third floor in your mansion. The whole this mansion style was a whole thing you could see through it. It was wild. It looked like like um sci-fi kind of a stuff like yeah. that. Like you could see, in other words, far into the future. Futuristic is another design. Futuristic, supernatural. They have this, these are styles in heaven. Oh, so really? everybody, everybody pictures for some reason. I've had kids draw pictures of, of heaven. They all draw something that looks like the White House. Everybody's house is big. It's got columns. I went, mm, there's a few like that, but wow, they have they ha they they have houses in rain. They have a rainforest in heaven. I haven't talked about that. The rainforest is amazing in heaven. The yeah. leaves are huge on all the trees. They have these massive trees that, that hold the whole mansion. So your really? mansion is yeah. like living I in this massive tree. Sometimes several trees together is so huge, and we don't have to think. Is it weight bearing? Is the structure going to stand? You know, is this going to fracture this? I'm talking like architecture talk right now. So yeah. they have to come into all the thoughts when they build. You don't have to do that in heaven. You don't have to consider it. Some of them are in the air. They don't even have them on the ground. They just float in the air. The whole building floats in air. It's and crazy. you just you take a step and then you zip through nothing up to the building and then you go <laughs> are there architects in heaven designing this or is it all done with the word of mouth and nobody has to sit there and draw it out what, what no. would you this is another whole subject steve you're the first okay. one who's asked me this i'm very excited now i'm really excited okay i love design i love design yeah Interior design i love architecture um the father and the son build your mansion it is not built by human hands. Your mansion, you actually live in your main, I'll say your main mansion. The Holy Spirit is going to tweak me through this whole thing. Your main <laughs> mansion that is given to you, it is your, all the property, everything on that property is yours. And so, what? Uh, but that is designed by the Lord. He's a carpenter, people. He is still a carpenter. He actually can build your mansion. It doesn't have to be built out of wood. It's built out of subjects and materials we don't even have down here. Yeah, um, I think. But they make it for you, and they know what you love, or they know what you would be excited about. They don't just design your mansion. You have transportation. You could have a chariot with real horses that fly. You could have a little star cruiser, which a lot of people do. You have different ways. They have motorcycles in heaven that run by fire. And they have trails really? of fire that they ride on in heaven. This is God's fire. It's not hell's angel. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I'm probably going to do, just because my husband loves to ride bikes, I'm, we're probably going to design a whole line of motorcycle wear apparel with, with symbols of heaven and God in it. You oh, know? very cool. Because all fire and all lightning, that belongs to God. Doesn't belong to hell. Okay. They yeah. have nothing but torment and torture. Um, but these houses, there's other buildings besides your house. You get to build stuff also. You may even do a project for people in a whole, a whole area of heaven that you and the Lord designed together and you work together to make that. It won't be someone's mansion. Your mansion says it's not built by human hands. It is by the Lord, by the Father. They get involved some of the hosts. They have some of the hosts probably from Gabriel's side. I mean, do they it's assemble it or do they speak it into existence? He does both. Okay. He does both. A lot of the time he'll speak it into existence, but everything inside, a lot inside he'll actually make. He'll make a lot of the interior stuff, like the furniture or, or art on the walls. They have artists who move to heaven, and sometimes they are allowed to be a part of the project for somebody's mansion. The art on the wall it doesn't have to be in a frame. It's just like on the wall. But when you walk past it, when you come home to heaven and here's your mansion, right? When you walk past that art, it comes to life. There's a, so many different dimensions of wow. being able to build things and make things. But people, let's say they do rodeos. That's, that's what, and they have rodeos in heaven. 
Wow. Where the bulls and the horses are talking to you while you're trying to ride. <laughs> Go ahead. Try and stay on me, right? These are things people never, does it not say eye is not seen or ear it heard or entered in the heart? Or mind? Does it not say that, Steve? It does say it that. It never yeah. entered it in your heart. So don't question it when I say all your pets talk, okay? People believe their pets are there, but talk, yes, they talk. They have it built into them to talk. Well, these rodeos that they have, they're different no one's going to get hurt. They will get pucked off. And the, whore, the, the, the bull may pick you up and throw you, but you're not going to get hurt. So they're exciting. People yell and cheer. They're usually cheering for the bull or the horses, by the way. But And you think you're so hot because down here on earth you would win at the rodeos. Well, just try Heaven's Rodeos and see what you get. It's still going to be fun. But that thing, not your mansion, your mansion's built, but your thing that you're a part of that is part of your gift you know how you would like things made or maybe add to and be different. That would be a project you would work on with the Lord. So yes, you actually get to design things and places in heaven. And on the new earth, he'll take you to new planets and you'll get to design a lot of stuff on that planet. Really? He's, he's training us. Earth is first basic, basic trainings, or basic, very basic. Very basic. Heaven, right. is, heaven is increased building and creativity to higher levels and you get to rule and reign with christ even on the new earth you're not going to be over people it's areas and things that have special things going on you get to be a part of that and be over that so you don't never you're never going to be bored but this whole thing about do you get to build stuff you're the first person who's ever asked me that yes really you do. really you i get am to build places mm -hmm. maybe fun places that parks that have all kinds of different exciting things like the bubble thing where kids stand on a platform a bubble comes down and captures them and they go fly around to heaven in these bubbles that was designed by a person who moved to heaven but it wasn't i love, it. I love it that um yeah i i i've been on a kick the last few years where where basically someone tells me like what you just said and i'm going I, I I do not allow cynicism or skepticism. It doesn't approach me. I just yeah. go, wow, how and how we would do that. Uh, but but I I I always say either out loud or to myself, I really believe that. And I absolutely believe everything you said. There's not a shadow of a doubt. I can't figure out how the Lord personally builds it when there's billions of people perhaps in heaven. That that's a, a brain. There's no time. <laughs> there's no time, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, to you, it's like immediate, like it's immediate, you know. Yeah. Um, and even people sometimes, which nobody ever asked me this question, I'll just add it to what you said. Yeah, please. There do. are people, family members to someone who will be coming home to heaven. They'll go watch the Lord make that mansion. Oh, I like that. That'd yeah. be cool. Very They'll be cool. there watching it being built, and it doesn't take a long time because, of course, he's supernatural and he's great at what he does. But um, there are architects who come to heaven. This is the good part, too. They still have architects. That is their gift to design and build. If you had decided, I just had these awesome, amazing ideas, especially if you visit the idea zone in heaven, you're going to get them. I want to build this place. It would be exciting. Do you think you could draw some plans so I could think about what it looks like or maybe I should change it? So they'll go see an architect that was his gift. And they sit down together and they draw out these whole plans for this place in heaven. And the Lord comes and help them make it. He loves, it says, God loved to reason together. What that really it. revelation is, they like to think about things together, plan things together, and do things together. He loves that. He loves to do that. So, so a lot of that stuff I've never even really talked you know, about. I just uh, sat down um, in a meeting because we're re we're redesigning the lobby and the bathrooms, and we yes. are just at the uh, pavilion now. Uh, you've been there; it was the JPC Church at the time. I remember that. We're, we're, it's a big so, place. <laughs> yeah, it's a big place, and we sat yeah. in there with an architect. And I've never dealt with an architect ever before, and I really liked her. And she was writing out everything I said and drawing out little things, and I. And she said, you, you know, I can provide uh, elevations for you on what we're talking about. But I said, it's oh, pretty so basic. You know about the elevations, yeah. For, yeah, for, so I first said, no, I don't think we need that. But but then I, they began to explain more and more things. I said, you know what? I would like elevations on that. I'd like to see yeah. what that looks like. So yeah. And it's, my hat's off to, to someone who can do that. I know they yeah. use computer programs and CAD programs, but they still have to have it in their head to tell the computer yeah. what to do. Yeah. So, I'm the I'm the hardcover person. I'm like I always like hardcover books, not 
But I did that where I worked. I worked for architect and interior designer oh, you did. for five years. Yeah. I learned so much about doing space planning. Yeah. You had that done. You go to a room, you decide what's going to be in that room. You sketch. I still would sketch it out. That's why I have a, I have a draft board this big. And I have, I will sketch a lot. Of, and I do a lot of my sketches about heaven. I take them and take them to my artist. And then he makes them look nice. beautiful, nice, yeah. beautiful. But I can do it good enough that he knows what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. So it's real exciting. So you don't lose that in heaven. It increases. That's really good. That's really good. Because it was like, if there's a thing about how will I use my brain in heaven, you just described a lot yes. of it today yes. and all that. Yeah. I do have one more question about pets, and that's going to be our time. Um, yeah. Kenzie's asking, do our pets get their own little houses? She said this about 20 minutes ago, so she didn't hear anything we just said. Okay. Before she asked, do our pets get their own little houses in heaven, or do they live with their owners? Where do they Where do they live if, if it was a family pet? They get both. Okay. They have their own place. Okay. They're a little bit more advanced. Okay. Their brains are more advanced in heaven. You know, their ability to communicate totally changes because before they had to bark, they don't they don't have to bark in heaven. They speak. They talk just like we do. So all, all of that changes your life. Just that one thing alone. They have their own wardrobes. Now, they only may wear a jacket. They like hats, depending on whether they're cats or dogs. <laughs> That's hilarious. Or donkeys <laughs> or turtles or eagles. Or we just can go. The pet thing goes. It just goes wild for how many pets people. Dinosaurs. Or, now, you have to kind of visit them in Dinosaur Park. I don't, well, I guess you could have one on your property if you wanted to. I've seen pterodactyls in people's property. And they're either visiting, but they were, had a massive perch. That was their perch. So they would come to visit or what they were doing. Gee. So it's beyond the imagination. Crazy. It is still holy. All this stuff is still holy. You don't lose that holy, uh, the way that you live your life. You don't, you don't lose the splendor, the wonder, the glory, the glory and the glory, the awe and overwhelming of the person of the Father, the person of Jesus, of Holy Spirit. You never lose that. You, you you want to honor them, you want to love them, you want to just, you know, it just that happens because of who they are. But they like to do exciting things also. People see them as only God sitting on a throne. They do a lot of stuff. They're involved in a lot of stuff in heaven. And they love creativity that comes to them. Our Father is a creator, right? Jesus created things. Even in the natural, he created things. So why wouldn't we? Of course we're going to. So, um but, but I'm excited just thinking about one day living there. But I tell people, they get the idea about heaven. But that's not your permanent place, people. It gets better. Heaven has been the Father's home forever. Jesus' is home forever. Holy Spirit is home forever. Melchizedek, there's a, there's a short list. The cherubim, some of the seraphim, uh, the seven spirits of God, there's 24 elders. They have always existed. None of these are people who lived on the earth one time and then became these people. They always existed as those people. And sometimes they'll come to be part of the project. A lot of times the 24 elders aren't on their thrones. They're out doing stuff with people in heaven. Nice. And so it's just, it's, that's just the way it is. But the creativity flows from you. It's not like you have to think really hard. You're getting all these wonderful ideas all the time. And you can't wait for other family members to come and enjoy this. Sometimes if parents, say a husband and wife are really very senior, like maybe in their 90s, I better say 100s, my mom will get on to me. If you're in your 100s and stuff like that, you're really knowing that pretty soon you'll be coming home. And one passes and they move to heaven. Very shortly after that, the other one will go. If they were really close, they're just going to go. Yeah. I tell people, don't be upset. If maybe your grandmother passed away, the grandfather's still on the earth, just thinking about him, missing them a lot. And all of a sudden, they just go. And there's, um, But it's a very exciting, wonderful, beautiful, filled with splendor. And I have talked to people who actually had just a, like maybe two minutes or a minute, their loved one right after they passed would appear and say, I'm good. I'm with God. I'm with Jesus. I'm just going to go home. I will be praying over you, but I'm going to go. I just so want you to know I'm okay. Yeah. And uh, that happens a lot too. Yeah. It does happen a lot. So that they will good. stop grieving on the earth. But right now it's so apparent that there is a heaven. 
millions and millions and millions of people have read the book, seen the 400 hours. On, there's 400 hours of me on YouTube talking about heaven. You're on YouTube. And what, what's the name of the YouTube channel? Is it just say cat it's, curve? It's, it's, on, it's on many. And some people actually create their own Facebook just to show the stuff I've said. Yeah, well, there's that too. There's a but lot of stuff all, out there. Yeah. I would just say you can probably just, uh, I don't know, maybe catcar.com. You could go there and probably show us stuff revealing heaven. Um, a lot of meetings, um, people capture meetings and put them on YouTube. They'll record all my meetings. And a lot of people do record. In the beginning, I didn't even know people were recording, never even thought about recording. And uh, then I started seeing things popping up in different places. And I went, is somebody recording that? <laughs> yeah, 400 hours of it. Wow. So I think if you really want to see them, Google the word heaven. Yeah. Well, you, you Google heaven or Google Cat Kerr. K-H-E-K-E-R-R. -E and it'll show you hours and hours and hours and hours. Now, you need to know I don't put the commercials on there. People go, why is that bad commercial? I didn't put the commercials on there, people. I don't have time and wouldn't know how to do it anyway. I'm yeah. just running my race yeah. as fast as I can. That's the price we pay for getting it free, and it's good to have it free. But yes. they get to put the commercials on as long as everyone knows that. So, well, yes. Kat, uh, I'm going to have you bless the people. What uh, Was there any last thing you wanted to say before you – Pray to bless the people. Except about the for this thing. Don't forget to vote for Trump. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's vote every Trump. single vote. Every single yeah, vote. Every every single one counts. And regardless of this, I'm going to just tell you the same thing God said. Tell the people no matter what they see happen or hear happening during the elections and even at the end, they're going to try to somehow steal it. They're just, they're going to try their best. Yeah. I know their other plan is, well, if and I'm not kidding about that either. They've actually said it. They've actually said it. I don't know where they get the rain. I believe from. that's in They've their actually heart, yes. said it already in, in interviews and stuff like that. I guess they're not thinking I'm being interviewed. Maybe I should watch what I say. They just say it. We'll just get rid of him. They're not going to be able to do that, people. Pray for Trump. They'll heal. He'll continue to hear God, be open to hearing God, that God has the right people with him. And if they're not the right people, let that be exposed because we don't want him working with people who are trying to work against him. Right. Pray for his family to be taken care of, to be protected, and pray for them to have some time to have fun. Yeah. They need to have fun a lot. They need to have fun. We all need to have fun. Take a break, have fun, eat cake, and That's celebrate. Good. That's good. Well, uh, would you go ahead and bless the people as we close? We appreciate that so much. Okay. All right, Father, I just bless everybody watching right now, yeah. God, live. I love life. Yeah. God, I pray for them, God. I care. I care. God cares about every person who's been injured or wounded or has had things taken from them. God, I pray that you open the door for them to have better and more than they ever had before. I thank you for wholeness and healing right now. Yeah. I release the anointing that destroys every yoke of darkness Thanks, of them, Lord. the enemy coming against anybody out there for any reason. I mm. sever any and all That's witchcraft. Good. And I have told people this before. If you feel like witchcraft is operating against you there are symptoms sometimes severe confusion sometimes is one and sometimes you might feel a little i don't know why but you'll feel a little piercing sometimes in your head and that's witchcraft trying to attach itself to you and you've done nothing wrong you haven't called it to you or anything they just you know it's like the devil whatever you yeah. get away with he'll try if you do you just go i sever all and any witchcraft you put it over your head right now in jesus name and instantly that connection is going to be broken of what they're trying to do. That That's is perfect. a simple thing. Okay. And this is something God designed. And so father, I just pray blessings upon everybody's household that you'll give them witty ideas, send rivers of joy because yes, the Lord. joy of the Lord is our strength. Give them strength, give them energy and even celebration God for what is coming celebrate what God is going to do. He is intervening. We are not going to lose our country. It's not going to go to hell. You will be dangerous against hell by believing in Jesus Christ. Run your race the way he told you to run it. Don't give up on any of the things he said you would do. He still has plans for you. In Jesus' name, I pray and declare restoration is coming to families. Restoration of your finances. Restoration of your gift. 
God's bringing it now. He's not waiting for everything just to end and start anew. He's going to start doing things right now. Send the money train, God, for those yeah. who really have poured their resources mm -hmm. into helping other people in this time, God. Give them triple and even a hundredfold return on the things they've invested for others. Give it back and let them have a harvest of blessings. Thank you for the prayers you've prayed for people. It does matter in the spirit realm. Take your authority and dominion over the enemy. Don't tolerate it. We don't have to line up with what evil wants. We line up with what God wants and desires to give us. So, Father, let them be free. Let them be happy. Let them be excited about what is to happen. In Jesus' name, and bless our president, Donald J. Trump. Bless his family, all of his friends who have never given up him. Bless Rudy Giuliani. I'm just going to go. I could go down a long list. Yeah. All those who supported Trump, helped Trump, and they were put in mm. jail because they did it. Break that curse off of them. Break that witchcraft off of them. In Jesus' name, let them be free. In Jesus' name, get ready for justice, liberty, and freedom in this country again. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 All right, Kat. Really, really good today. Always good, but this was just really special. So yes. have a great election day, everybody. Make sure you vote. Yes. God bless yep. you. I'm going to go Thank vote. You. Thank you, Kat, so much. <laughs> and we will see you on. Let me see. Oh, tomorrow will be Johnny Enlow. Uh, wow. We're going to do it live. It's uh, sometimes we do as a recording. So it's going to be great, great, great day tomorrow yep. as well. Have a great day, everybody. See you all later. Bye-bye.